Hi everyone, in this video we will take a look at how the relationships constraints are really important in the part creation using the SOLIDWORKS. So let's get started with uh, one simple part. Uh, let me start off uh, creating the sketch in the front plane and let me just uh, create <coughs> some sketches here something like this and so as you can see that uh, this sketch is uh, completely undefined it has no constraints or relations uh, if we want to create uh, the relations between the entities then there are several options you can always uh, find out the relations, uh, existing relations under this display uh, slash delete relations. So we can add or delete the relations if we don't want. Um, we can also fully define the sketch using this uh, particular option here. Uh, but if I just cl click this point uh, and I click uh, by holding the control key down another point and the third point as well. And if I let go uh, the control key um, I can see that uh, there are several options appear here on the pop-up menu here or and also we can add relations on the left side as well. So uh, if I want to for example make this particular line horizontal so if I just simply click on that line and then click on make vertical or make horizontal you know accordingly it will change. So if I say make vertical uh, then the line becomes vertical. If I click um, uh, and you know two points by holding the control key down again I can make them uh, vertical so they will be right one below each other also there are several other options that you can uh, choose from for example if I wanted these uh, two uh, lines to be making an angle of 90 then I could click on these two lines by holding the control key uh, down and then I can use the option for make perpendicular or I can make uh, collinear so then accordingly you know your sketch will change I can always control Z to go back I can make control uh, I can again select the option of make perpendicular if I want to make these two sketch lines parallel then I can click and hold uh, the control key, key down these both these lines and I can make these two lines parallel and then accordingly you can see those constraints are displayed here. One thing is uh, very critical to understand is uh, that the constraints and the relations comes before the dimension. So you should not uh, start dimensioning the part right away, but first make sure that if there are any existing constraints or the relations that you may want to add, do that first and then go ahead and add the dimensions. So always keep in mind that the constraints and the relations come first before the dimensions. Okay, uh, we can click on uh, and display the relations here. So I can see there is a vertical uh, relation that we've added. As you can see, it's highlighted in that um, you know color here. Then another vertical. You know we selected those two points to make them vertical. Perpendicular. This is the constraint we added also we added the parallel constraint so all those relations will be visible here and you can uh, even delete them if you don't want or um, delete all the relations accordingly you know whatever is your need again it's uh, it's always important to have at least some part of the sketch uh, or, you know having some relation with the origin you never want to leave your sketch um, that has no relation with the origin so it will always appear blue even though you you know select all the uh, dimensions uh, for that so there has to be at least one dimension uh, related with the origin or at least some entity that is merged with the origin in order to make the sketch fully defined all right so in this case let's say if I select this uh, point uh, control key holding it down and then the origin and then again this point I can make all of these points vertical and so the Corporal shift. So you can play around with all these constraints and uh, relations that uh, you need to create. For example, 
uh, if I create uh, you know some circles here let me bring it inside here and if I want all of them to be equal dimensions uh, and if only one of the circles dimension is specified uh, with whatever the value and it says all these circles are having equal dimensions then it makes sense first to uh, click the circle that you want to have the base dimension and then select the other two circles and then you can make them equal sometimes you know it really depends on what uh, the uh, uh, dimensions the two circles are having you know more closer dimensions it will uh, go to that uh, dimensions first but now if I uh, assign the dimension to one of the circle and let's say 40 okay and if I want to again go ahead and give dimension to uh, this circles it's going to say that it is over dimensioning it because it already knows what the dimension of this circle is because of the constraint that we put in place already so we don't need to assign over dimensions cancel it out same thing with the third circle if we have already made it equal it's going to still say that this is over defined okay so it's again it's it's very important uh, to use the dimensions um, after the constraints and the relations are provided and always make sure that your sketch is having some relation with the origin so now if I go to fully define uh, the sketch, uh, click on uh, the display relations and then click on fully defined sketch. And if we click on all entities in the sketch and calculate, the SOLIDWORKS is automatically going to assign several dimensions uh, that will make the sketch fully defined. And you know, obviously not every time that these dimensions uh, you, know, you would want uh, so, you know, there is a, a lot of work in cleaning out uh, the dimensions that uh, that you really don't need to be the driving dimensions or the direct uh, dimensions, okay? Some dimensions are direct dimensions, some dimensions are indirect dimensions, which means that they are calculated from the driving dimensions. And the tolerances are always applied on the driving dimensions the dimensions that you put in your drawings are the driving dimensions. For example, we are not uh, telling the SOLIDWORKS as what is the dimension of this particular length. Uh, for example, if I put it here, it's going to say that it's over uh, dimension or this is a driven dimension, which means that it is indirectly calculated from the uh, driving dimensions or the directions that we've already specified. So the tolerances while machining are applied on the driving dimensions and not on the driven dimensions. The driven dimensions are absorbing uh, the tolerances. Okay, So that is uh, why the relations and uh, the constraints are uh, very critical uh, to any SOLIDWORKS part uh, that we uh, create. Uh, the other uh, thing that we were uh, going to talk about in this video is the short curves, the S key, which we have already talked about it in the very first video of this module when we uh, were looking at getting started with the SOLIDWORKS. But again, uh, I can go ahead and um, talk that one more time. So if I just press the S key, I can see all these sketch menus that appear that I can quickly select. For example, if I wanted to use the sketch filler, um, I don't really need to go in the command manager and look for that option and all that I can just simply click S key and then just select from it um, let's say I wanted to use this fillet right here um, you know obviously this is a random sketch so it's gonna give us some um, errors or something like that if the dimensions are conflicting uh, but you know something like this <coughs> So you can use the S key for that purpose. Uh, again, um, you can use the middle. That's the case of the overdefined sketch. So I'm just going to control C uh, to get back to what the sketch was. All right, so control one, two, eight, uh, you know, you can use it uh, for the shortcut commands. Uh, zoom can uh, rotate. 
if you move the scroller of the uh, mouse uh, forward and backward then it's uh, doing the zoom in and zoom out uh, if you hold the control key down and press the middle mouse uh, roller then you can pan it uh, on this plane in the XY plane up, uh, upward downward or the sideways or uh, anywhere on this plane and uh, if you just click uh, and the uh, middle uh, scroller of the mouse then you can rotate uh, the object in the graphics area. Uh, let's say we put at some different angle or orientation by using control 8 it will again be oriented normal to the viewpoint which means that control 8 uh, will always bring it back to normal to the viewpoint or the normal to the plane on which we are creating that sketch. Okay. Let's say if we extrude this uh, object something like this. Now if we uh, use control 1, control 1 will make it to the front plane, control 4 will make it to the right plane and uh, control uh, 5 will make it to the top, control 7 is the isometric view and control 8 is normal to the viewpoint which in our case was the front plane that we selected and that is why it has again oriented uh, normal to the front plane for sketching. So these are again some of the shortcuts and and another thing in this uh, video is that uh, we can again look at the section view. So if you click on the section view uh, and depending on what section that we choose either the front plane or the top plane or the right plane um, let's say we do the top plane then it's going to create a section at whatever the distance we specify or even you can um, you know use this progress uh, bar for the direction and let's say we want to use the section cut here and if you click OK so you would see the object as if you know it was uh, cut using that uh, uh, using that plane but obviously the you know we haven't physically cut the uh, component if we uh, check on this or click on this sectional view again the object will come back to its uh, original uh, position the other um, you know appearance uh, updates that you can do it on the part for example if you go to the edit appearance uh, and let's say we want to have the faces colored in different one so if you can uh, click on the face option and let's say whatever the color we uh, choose you know depending on what options that we choose here uh, we can uh, um, make the appearance of the object in a different color and that is basically the uh, end of uh, this video and in the next uh, video we will take a look at some of the examples uh, to create simple parts Thank <laughs> you.